Hello everyone, welcome back to another lesson. And this lesson basically begins uh, section four, which is working with reference data. And in QRadar, reference data is basically a collection of elements that we can define statically or dynamically uh, that we can work with. So for example, it can be a collection of IP addresses, a collection of usernames, and so on and so on. And in the next video, we're going to see how we can uh, combine those types of elements and our detections, which is very, very good for our use cases. So we have two ways we can work with reference data. And the first way is to go to the admin tab and click on reference set management right here. And it, all of those are uh, default reference sets that come pre-installed with our deployment. And the second way to do it is to download the reference data management application from IBM's App Exchange. So I already downloaded it. And if you guys remember from our previous videos, you can go ahead, click on extensions management, browse for our application file, and add it to our deployment. So let's go ahead and install that. And we're going to see uh, what is the difference uh, between using the external app and between using the built-in reference data management. And it's quite similar, but the user interface is uh, different. So let's give it a moment to install here. And I want to mention that many use cases uh, you will probably be building we have some sort of capability or functionality uh, to work with reference sets. And it's a very important capability of QRadar and uh, necessarily any other SIM systems. Let's go ahead and take a quick look on how that works. So let me refresh the page here. And we can see a new tab has been created, data management. And at the left side, we can see all of the type types of different reference data that we have available. So the most common one would be the reference set, which is a just a collection of elements, right? Um, can be IP addresses and can be usernames, uh, anything that you want to collect. A, a reference map and a reference table are used uh, less than reference set. So I will not go into too much detail about those. But a reference table, for example, um, it's quite different. It works in key value pairs, right? So you have the key, which can be a certain element. So let's say, for example, a key could be your um, server, for example, and under the server, you have different kind of elements about it. So you can have IP or you can have host name, you can have um, allowed user lists to access the server, you can have blocked user lists. So any combination of keys of, of a single key and um, multiple values, right? So if you go ahead and go back to reference set, I'll go ahead and create a new one. And I'm going to name it loud usernames. And under element type, I'm going to select ALN IC, which means alphanumeric ignore case. So our data is going to be alphanumeric because it's comprised of characters. And I don't care about case sensitivity. If I would have cared about case sensitivity, I would, would have chosen ALN, which is just alphanumeric. And as you can see, we can specify numbers, we can specify IPs, ports, and dates. So I'll choose ALNIC. And timeout type, it's an optional parameter. It's basically the value based on which new data expires from the set. Right? So I can also set a time to live for elements. So if I, for example, choose two hours, 
it's time to live, each element will be present in my reference data collection for only two hours and then it will be deleted. So I'm gonna, I'm not going to use that right now. And let's go ahead and create our reference set. And as we can see, it's currently empty. And right here, you see the dependence, which will populate depends on which rules or detections are using that reference data. So if I have 10 different detections that are using this um, reference set, I'm going to see those 10 rules being populated right here. So we can add elements to a reference data in a few ways. It can be from the API, uh, Curator API, which we will see in the end of the course. Um, we can do a single entry, a bulk entry, import from a CSV file, and then we can also export the data. So let me go ahead and do a bulk add here. So I'm going to do uh, user one, comma, new line, user two, comma, new line, and my username from my Windows logs. And you can see we have a separator here, right? So this character basically identifies which character will be used from for a new line. So I can use, for example, a pipe and I can replace those with pipes. Right, so let me go ahead and do that. And for the last element, you do not need to add uh, a separator, okay? And if you click on save, you can see that all of our data has been added in one go. So that's, a, that's one of the ways, um, probably the most common way other than a CSV import to add elements to a reference data. And just as an example, I also want to show you how to create a reference table. Let me go ahead and call that servers. I'm not going to set a time to live. And the outer key label is going to be simple server name. It's going to be Elnik as well. And the inner keys are basically like we've seen in the in this uh, example in the previous example are the properties so it's like a class and the class functions let's go ahead and add a few here let's go ahead and call this one server ip load users and just a random property. Delete the fourth one. Go ahead and create it. And as we can see, it's empty right now. Let's go ahead and add a single entry. So let's say our server name is DNS, DNS server. Uh, its IP is going to be 1.1.1. This can be whatever we want. And the allowed users, uh, for example, let's say admin can be test user one. So we see that our key is being created. And all of the sub properties, which are the keys, are basically going to be present here. Just uh, let's pay attention to the fact that we have chosen that the random property and allowed users are ALN, right? So it's going to be case sensitive. Um, so if you if you want it to be case insensitive, we have to change it to ALNIC as well, right? So reference sets are vastly used within curator detections, and they can be populated and depopulated dynamically from the um, rule creation menu itself. And in the next video, we're going to see how we can use uh, this functionality in order to make our detections more dynamic and more capable. So I will see you guys in the next video.